Hello everyone, my name is Phil, welcome to Phil's Computer Lab. Over the next few weeks we're going to have a look at the 486 computer. I have a lot of videos planned, I can't reveal too much, but today in this video we will have a look at a range of ISA and Visa local bus graphics cards. The 486DX33 offers basic performance and the question gets asked do I even need to have a Visa local bus card? What about just sticking with an ISA card? Will I miss out or should I get a Visa local bus card? So that's also something we're going to look at. I will benchmark them using 3D Bench, 3D Bench version 1.0C, Chris's 3D Bench in VGA and SVGA, PC Player Benchmark in VGA and SVGA, and we also have Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, and Quake. To make my benchmarking a little bit easier and streamlined, I updated my benchmarking pack. It has a few more options now. It still uses a simple choice start menu, very simple, and it works. I will make this uh, available shortly. I'm still testing out a few things, and the uh, Wolfenstein 3D does not include the game file, so you need to own uh, a full copy and copy some files across, but I will explain all of that. There's more than just performance. We will have a discussion about prices and availability of these cards. It's great that you know what the fastest video card is, but can you actually buy it and is it going to be fairly affordable? Some of these graphics cards also have jumpers, so we're quickly going to talk about them. And also, what can you do in terms of upgrading the memory, for example? And some of these cards have issues with high resolution. We need something to fix the Visa compatibility, so we're also going to talk about that. A quick look at the motherboard and the test setup that I use to get all these results. I will talk uh, more in a separate video covering this motherboard. It's from Biostar, the MB1433. I'm using an ISA storage controller just to keep the Visa local bus uh, not, real, not saturated and 100% available for the video card. We've got the Intel 486DX 33 MHz. The motherboard also has 256 kilobytes of cache. We have 8 megabytes of memory. This is a AT to ATX power adapter, so I can use a modern power supply, and it comes with just a toggle switch to turn it on and off. And for storage, I'm using the good old GoTech USB floppy drive. If you don't have one of these, I can highly recommend it. They're super reliable, and you can have 1,000 floppy disks on a USB and just uh, select the floppies with the buttons at the front. And then I'm using a 2 gigabyte compact flash card in one of these Compact Flash 2 IDE adapters. So let's have a quick look at all the video cards. The first one is an older video card from Trident for the ISA bus. This is a very popular card, the Tseng ET4000AX. This is the Diamond Speedstar 24X with the Western Digital 90C31 chip. Another old looking graphics card. This one has two chips, one from Witek, the Power 9000, and the other one from Oak. This is another old video card, but I really like the look of it. Made in Japan, NEC, and it has a Paradise chip. This video card has a Serious Logic chip, the GD5422. And another card with a Serious Logic chip, this one comes with the GD5424. A showing from Realtek with the RTG3106 chip. This video card has a chip from Oak, the OTI 037C. And my final ISA card from Trident with the TVGA 9000i-3 chip. And now we're having a look at the Visa local bus cards. I only have four, so it's a fairly limited range. This one has another chip from Trident, the GUI 9400CXI. And the remaining cards are all from Serious Logic. This one has the GD5426 chip, 
and this one has the GD5428 chip and the last card has the GD5429 chip. Okay, here we have all the results. Everything is on a single page, so at first it looks a little bit intimidating, but let me explain how this all works. So the colors represent the benchmarks. For example, the light blue one is 3D Bench version 1.0, and the orange one is 3D Bench version 1.0C. These are slightly different. For slower machines, you want to use uh, the version 1.0. For faster machines, version 1.0C. I benchmark both, just in case you want to compare it. Then we've got Chris's 3D Bench in uh, VGA and in SVGA and you can straight away see that not all cards have a yellow result which is the SVGA result for Chris's 3D Bench and that's because uh, they either don't have enough memory, only 256 or there were issues with the uh, Visa compatibility despite loading uh, UniVBE or Display Doctor um, it didn't work. So just keep an eye out for those colors. Also keep an eye out for the green color. That's the other SVGA benchmark, PC player benchmark. And you can also see a couple of cards that could not complete that test. The uh, blue one here, PC player benchmark. And then we've got uh, Wolfenstein 3D. That's a really uh, cool game to benchmark because it runs well. Doom and Quake, they don't really run run that well on the machine. Um, uh, I would, yeah, I would, I would not say uh, Doom is playable on the 486-33. I know some of you out there disagree, but I want to see at least uh, 35 FPS because that's where the uh, engine caps out in the full game. So and. As we uh, go up here with the graphics cards, we can see all the models here. So the lowest one is the Oak, uh, the ISA card, uh, which is significantly slower than all the other cards. The fastest one is the Sirius Logic with the GD5429 chip. Um, the other, in general, all the local bus Sirius Logic cards are very close uh, bunched together. The Trident is not too far behind. Uh, however, the ISA Trident cards, uh, the gap is a little bit uh, larger. We can see them uh, down here. Where's the top ISA cards? The Speedstar 24X with the Western Digital 90C31 chip and the Zeng ET4000. Um, they're actually performing really well and we can see that they're not far behind the local bus cards. So basically, if, if you're looking at a game that uh, doesn't run well on the ISA cards, getting a faster local bus card is not going to make uh, a difference. And what else have we got here? The Paradise, um, yep, also quite slow and the Realtek also. But look at that, the slowest uh, local bus card is actually ahead, is actually behind the uh, faster ISA cards. So that is quite interesting. Four ISA cards in, in, uh, in total have managed to stay in front of the local bus Diamond Viper. Some of these graphics cards have jumpers on them. This one for example is for zero weight states. So if you close this you get uh, better performance. This one is for the Interrupt 2. A lot of video cards have this jumper and usually you just close it and this jumper sets uh, the 16-bit mode for the bias. Now the only jumper that really affected performance was the uh, weight state jumper. I've done some bench benchmarks, I'll put the uh, graph onto the screen and if you don't run the card in zero weight state you will basically lose a little bit performance. So it's definitely worth checking out uh, documentation of your graphics card just by uh, looking on Google or looking at photos and trying to identify uh, what some of these jumpers do. But not every graphics card has jumpers. Some of the graphics cards also have 
DIP switches which allow you to configure certain aspects of the video card. Without documentation it's pretty hard to figure it out. Um, this particular card, the Speedstar 24X, has really good documentation and what you can do with these DIP switches is uh, change the refresh rate at certain resolutions. So that's also something to check out and if you by accident misconfigured them and you have any issues I would just do a Google image search uh, of that card and see if you can find a photo with uh, the positions set to the default settings. The other thing to look out for when you're shopping for a video card is to look for the memory. A lot of these cards have empty sockets so often that can uh, increase the price quite significantly if you have to purchase these uh, chips. So sometimes if a video card that has all the sockets filled is only 10 bucks or 20 bucks more, it might actually end up cheaper. Now where can you get these chips from? What you can do is just Google the um, model number on the chip and get the uh, same chip for these sockets. That might not always uh, result in finding them. So sometimes it's actually easier to find a donor card. Basically if you uh, are in a position of buying a couple of these cards for cheap and they all got the memory in sockets, buy a couple of them and you just remove the memory chips and use them in uh, your better in your, in your better or faster graphics cards. The other thing to watch out for with the memory is to buy the correct form factor. So they do differ in shapes and sizes, also in capacity and in speed. Usually there's a, a number at the end, dash 70 for 70 uh, nanoseconds. And you have to make sure that you, you buy one that's at least the same speed as the one that are already on the card. There's no point in buying something significantly faster. It's not going to make a difference. It just has to be fast enough uh, to run at the speed that the card runs at. Okay, all the results are in and we made some interesting findings. In general, all the older looking cards, uh, like this one over here, or this one, they perform quite slow. So there's a bit of a trend. Uh, here's another one that always also looks quite uh, old. So the newer modern cards that are more integrated do perform quite a little bit faster. Between local bus and ISA, there is a difference, but it's not massive on the 486DX33. So it's not as if um, a game that doesn't run well on the ISA card will suddenly become smooth on the Visa local bus card. The two fastest ISA cards I've got is the Western Digital with the 90C31 chipset and also the Zeng ET4000. Between the two, the Western Digital is more compatible with high resolutions, whereas with the uh, Zeng ET4000, I had to load the UniVBE software in order to get the high resolution modes to work. The quickest Visa local bus card I have is from Cyril's Logic with the 5429 chipset. Unfortunately, I don't have any Zeng ET4000 or S3 Visa local bus cards. They are supposedly a little bit faster. A real shame, but prices on these cards are quite steep and it is what it is. I'm just not able to uh, afford all of the cards that I want. Talking about pricing, which cards are value, and that's definitely the Cirrus Logic cards. I've been able to collect quite a few of them without even trying. They came bundled with other stuff. So if you're looking for a card that's available and has a fairly low price and performs quick and is compatible, the Cirrus Logic cards are definitely the way to go. By far the slowest graphics card is the Oak, the ISA graphics card. I call it the decelerator. Put it into your machine and it cuts your frames in half. And maybe that's a feature you're actually looking for. If you're trying to play an older game that runs too fast on your machine, maybe this card slows it down enough to make that game playable. The other brand that's not really that quick are the cards from Trident. The performance is not as bad as the Oak, but definitely one of the slower ones. The only Trident card that does fairly well is the Visa Local Bus with the 9400 CXI chip. 
And just to sum it up, there's more than just performance. If you found a video card on eBay and the prices are right, do check that it has all the memory, that the sockets are not empty. Have a look if you can find the documentation in, in case the graphics card has jumpers. Um, and that's really some of the things you need to watch out for. And that's it for this video, guys. So this was really the first uh, video to kick off the 486 and DOS videos coming over the next few weeks. We will look at faster 486 stuff. We will take a closer look at the uh, 486 motherboards that I have. I've got three in total. We will look at PCI cards and I'll do a few tutorials on DOS as well. And I've got some stuff plan to do with uh, MIDI music and sound cards. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, what graphics card do you use in your 486? What works well? And yep, just share the thoughts. I'm always eager to hear from you.